Many are now looking into using eco-friendly, sustainable materials as talks on the effects of climate change continue. Green, or the so-called sustainable architecture, uses eco-friendly materials in building structures. Now we have in the studio a Filipino architect who does just that. Liza Morales Crespo uses sustainable design as she works on five-star hotels and luxury developments worldwide. Good morning, Liza, and welcome to Solar Daybreak. Good morning, Claire. Good morning, Ameline. Thank you so much for having me here today. So let's talk about green architecture. How different is this from what, mainstream architecture? It seems though that we've been hearing much about mm -hmm. it. Is this now the new trend or the new norm in architecture? Yeah, well green architecture, it could mean different things for different people actually. Even within the architecture and the construction industry, there's really not one common definition for it. For me personally and for my practice, however, uh, we've espoused this whole systems approach to building, which means that we really get down into the components and the materials and really breaking it down, like what's involved with building a house, for example, or a building. So we really get down into the nitty gritty and the details and we look into paints, for example, mm. uh, you know, like what were we specifying? Do they have toxins? Do they have volatile organic compounds? Just to make sure that the occupants or the users and the clients, when yes. they move into the space, are breathing healthy air. Mm -hmm. So we get down into that kind of detail. I mean, that's just one thing. Uh, mm -hmm. We look into, for example, even the furniture. We get to ask the client, like, where are we sourcing this? Are they being sourced locally? Because it's important to be aware as to where things are being obtained just to make sure that the amount of fossil fuels that are used to transport these things mm -mm. you're not using so much because you know gasoline of course yes. is fossil fuels and that's not very environment friendly if you're using a lot of that to transport whatever it is you're using yeah. we also look into the orientation of the building or the structure for example to make sure that for example where it's facing where it's hottest Mm -hmm. uh, are we doing something different for mm -hmm. that facade and it's not just you know some generic type of wall that we're using to make sure mm -hmm. that we're not uh, asking the client to use rely on air conditioning or mechanical means of cooling the space because you know these are the things that really make it sustainable and more green yeah one in particular i think is mm -hmm. the one um i haven't seen it yet mm -hmm. but it's the living wall yes. in the building of yes. the ps yes and it's yes. along edsa it's along I, edsa. I think that's very interesting yes. because you incorporated as well um what we've learned in biology about photosynthesis yes. and the uh, plant can you tell us more about that yes. because it really um illustrates exactly mm -hmm. what you were just telling us yes mm -hmm. um what are when we started the project uh, our client was really very very insistent on doing something that's green and I think that's a common thread with all the projects that our firm has been engaged in mm -hmm. and uh, we, they wanted something iconic this organization is very progressive and they mm -hmm. wanted something I mean it's in a very good location in Edsa and it's very visible so they wanted something there that would really sort of symbolize what the organization stands for and it's you know something that's forward-thinking so we conceptualized like having a 12-story green wall it's made out of plants and we actually consulted with botanists, with um, horticulturists, landscape architects, just to make sure that we're specifying the right kind of plants. And as we know, photosynthesis, there's they like carbon, carbon dioxide, dioxide. <laughs> exchange and oxygen. And we know how much pollution is generated on EDSA because of the vehicles that are present. So uh, we were hoping that somehow, I mean, it's you know maybe not big enough a gesture, but it's, at least it's a start to do something to help with, with the pollution that's in there. That system, and I could talk about it um, much in, in much detail later on, but uh, it's a closed loop system. Even the irrigation, we try to use rainwater mm -hmm. for that, you know, so it's not just something there that's decorative, but it's also, you know, like um, using a lot of these other um, green interventions that we've learned. Mm -hmm. Now, looking at your background, mm -hmm. I know that you uh, studied in New York yes. and in New Jersey, and you mm -hmm. also worked as an architect in uh, the U.S. as well. Yes. And now you're working here yes. as an architect. Yes. Now, how would you compare the, the technologies in the U.S. now compared to what we have today in the Philippines? Do you think that we're trailing behind or are we catching up or are we at par with the other countries when it comes to uh, you know, going green? Uh, we're still, I guess, we're still in the process of catching up. Uh, but however, there is a widespread clamor, like there's that interest from everybody, from developers, from clients, um, from even from the industry itself. So I think because there's a demand, people are slowly starting to think that, hey, there's an opportunity here. Um, slowly, like a lot of the products that are available in the U.S. are being brought here, which is good. 
Uh, we also try as much as possible to encourage the use of local materials because that's another way of incorporating green, the green aspect into, into building. Um, it's still, you know, at, is at, at, at its infancy, so I'm hoping that slowly, you know, we'll get there. Mm -hmm. And is it just buildings? Your your clients mm -hmm. are they mostly companies that that want this technology, that want sustainable um, uh, environment, sustainable mm -hmm. uh, buildings, or are there also people who want their homes to yeah. be the same? Yeah, we've adopted this kind of mantra with with my practice that there's no project that's too small or too big. Uh, we work with homes, we work with resorts, we work with small retail stores, we work with restaurants, office buildings, master plan, you know, like larger scale developments, and we consult on those. But the common thread amongst all our projects is that, you know, we try to incorporate the sustainability and the green aspect. And we make sure that from the very beginning, from the get-go, that the client is on board with that. Because, you know, if they want something that's just superficial, it's like, we just want to call it green, but it's really not, then we try, you know, we try to convince them as to what the merit are with you know um, it's for the long run uh, with regards to incorporating these aspects in the building so we, we do work with a, a bunch of different uh, project types of varying scales varying complexities so mm -hmm. yeah. well what local materials do you see or you would suggest that we use more often here in the Philippines that would also answer to the need for green architecture yeah we have a lot of bamboo and we try to incorporate that in our um, projects. However, some of them, they're being sourced, I guess, because the technology is still lagging behind with regards to making them into like, you know, usable materials for construction, like bamboo flooring, for example. Mm -hmm. But I think there's already that, um, you know, the start. Yeah, it can be flattened. It can be flattened. <laughs> and they're start, starting to look into that. And mm -hmm. I really try to incorporate as much bamboo in my projects just because bamboo is like one of the most sustainable materials. It takes less than five years to grow as opposed to using a lot, mm -hmm. a lot of other hardwood. Mm -hmm. So, you know, basically you chop it and it will grow back, you know, like you plant and it will grow faster than other types of wood. So that's something that we use a lot of. Um, we also, when we start a project, like just to give an example, uh, when we started uh, working on this retail music store, mm -hmm. um, it's a small retail music store, we go through this interview process with a client and we ask them, um, do you have a lot of inventory of any, any material that you wanted to dispose of that we could maybe recycle mm -hmm. and upcycle and reuse? And they told us, well, we have a lot of drums, we have a lot of drumsticks that, you know, they're not moving, we just want to get rid of them. So what we did was we gathered all those materials and we designed a light fixture using the drums and you know um, drumsticks. So it, it becomes something that's decorative and at the same time functional. So there's a lot of opportunity. We have a lot of natural resources. Um, we actually even specify terrazzo flooring mm -hmm. that uh, uses like those chips from soda bottles. Oh, so and it looks beautiful, and you know th those are sourced locally, so you, you know they're widely available. So we try to incorporate the use of those um, types of materials. So okay. yes, there's there's a lot that are you know just a matter of being aware and being on the lookout for them. Yeah. So let's say for Amelin and I, let's mm. say you know we want to go green uh -huh. and let's say convert our <laughs> yeah, living room our, space. Uh -huh. or so <laughs> is, is that possible? Are there things that we can do um, ourselves if we want to like have a green was that green space yeah <laughs> I mean, um i guess it's uh like story like for example like the, you're saying that the build the house is already built and you just want to like work on the interiors yeah. or is it from start to finish uh, uh, maybe oh. like maybe open to some a bit of renovations um thinking of <laughs> yes yes um uh, if if you still have the luxury of you know moving walls around or changing some of the openings, I mean windows are always great because that brings in you know daylight into a space, and mm -hmm. you're not relying on artificial lightning. And you know with electricity rates kind of at their highest right now, that's something that people are really very conscious of, and that's one thing. If you could still you know open open it up to more windows, just as more long windows. as it's not south facing and it's not the afternoon sun, then it's good because it kind of offsets. Like if for example you put windows, but it's in the hottest side, then you have to yeah. cool it, and you know right. that kind of defeats the purpose of you know doing what you're trying to do. But um, other, another thing is like really just sourcing like materials like for example even for example for my own home we sourced wood that was reclaimed from like re old railroad tracks and you're not like chopping up new right. wood basically and you know like there's a lot of like secondhand stores and you could make them into something nice and you know just having an eye for it um, so there's a lot of opportunity 
um, paint, as I've mentioned, just make sure that, you know, it's not just, you know, like being superficially green that, hey, you know, these are recycled and stuff, but the, the green aspect of it goes far beyond that. It's in, ensuring a healthy environment, you know, they have kids, right. so it, it's important to know what they're breathing, like mm -hmm. um, the, the textiles, like there was this book that I read that they said that, you know, like some of the cancer causing agents oh, are in, in textiles. textiles and adhesives and stuff, so mm -hmm. it's, it's scary, you know, as a mom. That's that true. you know, so you look into those things. What I found out recently, also those um, not real wood. What do you call that when they use a different type Laminate. of material? Laminate. 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 Yeah, yeah. They, they do yeah. say that it does. Um, there are fumes. That yes, are not there are fumes. good for the health or something. Yes, like and that's why I mean, when you wouldn't recommend laminate. I mean, we, <laughs> we it's okay <laughs> because it's still. I think it's it's sort of like a, a, so, something that's. Kind of tricky because with laminates, at least you're not using real wood and yeah. you're not chopping off new wood. Okay. Yes. However, there's also that other layer that you have to look at. So when we specify, we do use laminates in our projects, but mm. we specify water-based mm. um, adhesives, okay. and those are the ones that you know. Like we we'll even look into, you know, when when they submit the contractor submit something, we ask, we check what are the you know VOC content or the volatile organic content mm -hmm. and we have to really get into that just to make sure that you know it's not emitting anything that's harmful okay i guess another question would be like is it affordable for like let's say the middle class because mm -hmm. um, you know if you're looking into the ingredients of a product and if it's if it's well made mm -hmm. you know just like food when it's organic yes. it's more expensive yes. so is it is it is it affordable? I mean, mm -hmm. I know it's it's more expensive, mm -hmm. but is it affordable for, let's say, middle class people? Actually, I wouldn't really say that it's more expensive. Oh, okay. I mean, I think that's maybe a common misconception okay. because maybe, you know, like if we were talking about like 15 or 10 years ago, yes, maybe it's more expensive. But now, as I've mentioned earlier, there's, um, you know, more products that are locally available and a lot of local companies are getting into it mm -hmm. so it may not necessarily be more expensive okay. it's just a matter of knowing which products are green or which are sustainable because sometimes you know we fall victim to this thing that they call greenwashing and um, you know it's a term that's used in the industry to uh, sort of denote that products would claim to, to be, be green, green. Ah. even if it's not okay and you know like that sort of helps them you know justify the higher price yeah. tag and right, you, know, right. you just have to be really aware and on the lookout and you know just I tell everybody just read what's in the back of the label and you really even you know with shampoos and conditioners I really try to like you know even before I buy something for my kids I just make sure that you know what what are the ingredients mm -hmm. there are there any is there anything that's harmful mm -hmm. and the same thing for you know materials that you would use for building your home for construction, you know, um, just really getting into the you details. You just have to ask, no? Yes, you just have to ask. Mm. Research. research. Yes, research. And we'll right. call Liza. Yes. Liza, <laughs> 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 safe. Yes, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, you know, it's, um, it's, it's tricky because, you know, there's a lot of things out there. And, mm -hmm. you know, now that you're learning and you read the news and you, you, you see that all these things are coming, I was like, oh, this disease is being caused by this. And, you know, like, oh, they, my baby used that mm -hmm. before and, and all that. So yeah. it's really just being conscious and being really meticulous with you know it's it's the you know, it's devils in the details as well so you really have to get into it and just be aware of what yeah, on a personal basis I think um, you know going green and you know, I think it's an upward trend right now mm -hmm. because also with climate change and yes. everything yeah. that's been yeah. happening yes. in on in you know in, in the Typhoons. world the yes. and everything yes. so people are more conscious and I think they would want to do more things to help out the environment. Yes, and that's how I actually started out. I mean, you know, I was doing buildings traditionally the way we were taught in school and the way it was kind of handed down mm -hmm. over, over time. But uh, when you become a parent, you know, you start thinking about legacy and yes. you start thinking about what is it that you're leaving behind. And mm -hmm. I started questioning my career path as well. Yes. Like, what was I doing? Is I, Am I doing enough as an architect? And that sort of helped me do like a 180 with my career and start revisiting as to what my career path was at that time. So, you know, you just want to make sure that, you know, everybody has something to do. It's, it's not limited to the construction or the architecture industry itself, but um, everybody has a role to play. So users, clients, developers, you know, like you have to question, like when you get an architect on board or an engineer on board, just make sure that, you know, you're asking the right questions as well. Um, because, you know, the earth is everyone's. So, so it's not just, you know, in one particular sector's responsibility. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we, we start looking at that and we question, like, how much more can we do with regards mm -hmm. to helping the environment? Because at the end of the day, what are we leaving behind? And mm -hmm. that's something that, you know, helped us 
um, revisit what we're doing. And if you'd yeah. like to see the works of Liza, she has mm -hmm. a website yes. and there you can see all her projects and of course her upcoming projects as well. Yes. So thank you so much for thank joining so us this morning. Thank you so much. Thanks for chatting with us. Yes, it was fun. Thanks. Okay, Liza Morales-Crespo, good morning. Good morning.